Welcome to the Mind Channel. Each short video of this series covers a single key area of building information systems. This is not the popular learn and have fun edutainment. The episodes are short and dense. Please prepare for a deep dive. This episode covers the definition of informatics and key people from its early history. The traditional form of storing knowledge used streams of characters, pages, audio or video. To transfer their knowledge, authors create such streams, then use an accessible store to publish the final version. The audience can read, listen or watch them, or jump to repeat or skip parts. This static, linear nature will be important later. The first question is what the term informatics means in this context. Theoretically, informatics is the discipline that focuses on managing information. It helps a lot to know that information has a formal definition. It is something you did not know and could not derive from your existing knowledge. So information is a surprise. You must either change your mind to accept or not change and reject it. Information is relative. Someone can already know something that is unheard of information for others. That same piece of information can either be close enough to their current knowledge to integrate or be on reach so they will reject it as a nonsense. All depends on what they already know and how much they are ready to change. Countless generations of thinking people collected and handed over their accumulated knowledge. In abstract form, that total knowledge is our civilization. Like a city, with or without its population, kind of the same. Today, an individual can only handle a small part of this knowledge, and even that requires an elaborate building process. Each level of education introduces some information. Then let it settle down and merge into the coherent body of knowledge of that person. Then change it again by further information. Note the coherence. Knowledge is not a bag of random facts that you have heard about. It is a structured, self-reflecting and validating organic system. Informatics is the conscious management of information. It spans from everyone's personal learning process to the largest community and their knowledge. Today, it should be a dynamic symbiosis between all knowledge and the mankind that accumulates, uses and improves it. Informatics can appear in physical form as objects with a primary function to generate, store or manage information. They have one or many simple or complex states that an external entity with the related knowledge can use or change. Even passive objects can be a source of information, like a sign, a sundial or a lighthouse. Stores can be static like a book or dynamic like an abacus. Some of them, from clocks to computers, are active, can change their states by executing algorithms. Those algorithms can be static, physically fixed, like a clock or a printed circuit board. Semi-static algorithms use external configuration to describe their behavior, like switches at a railway station. Fully dynamic systems follow the von Neumann architecture, where the algorithm is an equal part of the state of the system. We use these physical objects for their beyond human reliability and speed. When creating them, we fight against physical limitations like noise or unclear states. We don't want books to shuffle their characters or computers to change the content of their memory cells randomly. We assume perfect operation from this layer, from a CNC machine to a space probe. Combining the theoretical and physical aspects of informatics, we get a global infrastructure it should support our evolving global operation with reliable information and predictions. The first step is to assign each piece of information one single master location to avoid ambiguity. This single source can be replicated to many places to provide quicker access, but all these nodes must know and refer to the master instance. Changes can be initiated and propagated in a global version control system. This allows parallel improvement experiments, transparent change history, access control and dependency management. This is informatics in this context. It sounds like an overambitious goal, but its inventors explained why this is essential to sustain an advanced technological civilization. Let's meet some of these people. We are in 1945. The Second World War has just ended 
and Varavar Bush realized a critical problem. He still is the head of the US Office of Scientific Research and Development, the center of all wartime scientific activity. It handpicked any scientist, engineer or technician from half of the world, put them into labs to work together. It was a huge single entity from the brain to the production line, test facilities and live application. This is the way to solve impossible problems from code breaking to the nuclear bomb. But now the war is over. Everybody goes home. They keep their knowledge and continue their research, but lose direct interaction and return to the old ways of communication over mails and publications. The identified real information problem is not the speed of writing, but reading. Researchers can't keep up with the parallel progress of all their colleagues. This makes a problem in peaceful utilization or further development of all these new technologies. To face this challenge, he sets a new goal to mankind in his article, As We May Think. Create a global online communication infrastructure called Memex from Memory Extension. It should allow knowledge workers access the results of their colleagues, like remembering their own work. He explains how improvements of recording and transmission technologies will enable this soon. He predicts that this network could start an exponential growth in the mental capacity of mankind, but only if used properly. Our next icon is J.C.R. Licklider, graduated in physics, mathematics and psychology. He had the background to investigate the interaction between people and machines. As a director at ARPA, he aimed to design the intergalactic computer network. This allowed his engineers thinking freely to understand the real problems and challenges of a planetary information system, that's the Internet. His Man Computer Symbiosis paper examined the cooperation between people and computers with beyond human capabilities. The US government had all the reasons to ask him to investigate the viability and possible services of Memex. The result is a book, Libraries of the Future, 1964. He started with separating human knowledge to two well-defined distinct segments. Transferable knowledge is objective, related to science and engineering. It's like Newton's mechanics or an X-ray image, independent from human interpretation and emotions. The goal of transferable knowledge is to make human minds uniform, reliable, replaceable. Being a surgeon or an engineer means playing that role as perfectly as possible, not showing off with risky tricks. The other is the non-transferable, subjective segment. Its values are humane, ask for personal understanding, like sacred books or a painting. This knowledge affects every individual differently. It changes how you process the things that you see and not how you measure them. Licklider states, that the information system should work only on the transferable part. On transfer, he means selecting, storing and making accessible the total body of such texts as one huge library. He starts with estimations of the total size of scientific knowledge in characters, then compares this value with the continuous and predicted improvement in data storage capacity and transfer speed. He concludes that creating a global central repository of this knowledge would be possible by year 2000. Accessing it would need interactive queries with an artificial search agent due to its enormous size and complexity. In 1989, Tim Berners-Lee implemented a system to handle the HTML document format and the HTTP protocol. HTML documents can use hyperlinks to refer to any other documents stored in a local or remote HTTP server. He put his work in the public domain. This became the World Wide Web as we know it. We are in 2024. The Internet is a global library of all knowledge of both kinds. We have search engines and interactive agents. Where is the problem? It helps a lot to know that there was another parallel attempt, Zanadu invented by Theodore Holm Nelson. For the record, he also coined terms like informatics or hypertext. He viewed informatics as a fundamental new medium beyond sheets of paper to share knowledge. In Zanadu, a document is not a long array of characters like a book appears to a reader. It is an edit decision list or EDL, an array of links to text fragments, images, charts, etc. arranged during the editing process as a book looks to the author 
Of course, the Xanadu document appears as a flow of characters in a client renderer application, but the reader can look behind the surface and see all its fragments, can use the links to look up the original sources. The cloud of all interconnected Xanadu text fragments would form the global collected knowledge. This was the vision of JCR Licklider, except for the condition of being transferable. However, the HTTP model was easier and cheaper to build and fit to the traditional write, publish, buy, read ecosystem. The problem is that the current approach supports content creation by anyone with tools and storage. The sheer amount makes human processing or quality control impossible. Even automated agents from Google's search engine to the large language models can only repeat the mediocre average. The only quality they sense is popularity by counting clicks or finding repeated patterns, but repetition is not information by definition. In the same way, true information is like academic education. It's hard to understand and absolutely not popular. Today, the whole IT ecosystem works against its goal, proper management of information. It wanted to overcome the limits of the human reading capacity, not writing or publishing. The infrastructure should limit the total amount and support conscious authoring of each and every fragment. It should cut redundancy and ambiguity, ensure transparent access and improvement. The forgotten separation of objective and human knowledge led to meaningless and endless debates over the feelings of a machine or efforts to squeeze randomness and noise into systems that were created to avoid them. The situation is like radio communication. It allows us talking to a space probe at the end of the solar system, but also flooding ourselves with the roaring white noise of repeated popular empty cliches. Among them, a very dangerous one is the illusion of knowledge and imitated understanding of informatics. This is the end of this episode. If you are interested in more details, you will find references and links to the related videos in the description. Thank you for your attention.